The day after the Battle of the Bay, all of Kenneth's closest friends and allies gather at Lycos Castle to celebrate their victory, all except one. I can't believe Tom is really gone. How am I going to face everyone? I can barely think straight. Annalise puts a comforting hand on her shoulder. I'm so sorry, Kenneth. We are all worried about him. Right now, well, being a queen means being strong for your people. Even if you feel like you're about to fall apart. I don't know if I can be strong right now. <laughs> you are the strongest person I ever met. Annalise opens a wooden chest and starts rummaging through Kenna's clothes. She pulls out two dresses and lays them on the bed. Now, if you're having trouble feeling like a queen, at least make sure you look like a queen. That always helps me. I suppose it's a start. Kenna spins in place, her dress glittering gold. How do I look? Regal and absolutely gorgeous. If I hadn't pledged my undying loyalty to you, I'd probably be doing that right now. One more thing before we go. If you want to get away for a little while later on, come and find me. Annalise gives Kenna's shoulder one more squeeze, and the two of them head to the Grand Hall. Applause rises from the assembled crowd who approach the top of the Grand Hall's main stairwell. Hail! We knew you would lead us to victory, Your Majesty. Thank you. Kenna's hand grips the banister, as if she could draw strength from the solid wood. Thank you. All of you. This victory is just the beginning. There is still much to be done. Many of Luther's underlings still hold positions of power. But now that we have defeated Luther himself, it won't be long until freedom is restored to every corner of the realm. Huzzah! Cheers ring through the crowded hall as Kenneth ascends the stairs. Annalise smiles encouragingly before disappearing into the crowd. Kalani and Noah meet Kenna at the bottom of the stairs. Congratulations, Queen Kenna. Thank you. Enjoying the party? Normally I'd be dragging all these mobs out onto the dance floor. But right now we've got more important things to do. Namely, marching back to Pendrion to knock that lily-handed prig Florian down on his ass. We can be ready to sail tonight if you give your blessing. You have it. Absolutely. And whatever other help I can give, talk to Leon. I'm sure you can find soldiers who would happily go with you. You're the best, Kenna. And since I'm surely now considered to be the hero of Pandrian... Ahem. Ugh, fine. Since we're now the heroes of Pandrian, they'll probably ask us to decide who the next ruler will be. Is that how politics work in Pandrian? Who knows? But what I'm saying is, you've got friends there. That's comforting. Thank you. Both of you. As Noah and Kalani leave the Grand Hall, Val walks up to Kenna with a goblet of wine in each hand. You look like you could use a drink. A drink? Is it that obvious? Only because I know you so well. Kenna reaches for one of the goblets, and Val takes a step back. Oh! Uh... Val, did you get both of those for you? No. Maybe? Val hands over one of the goblets. Here, I'll grab another one on the way out. On the way out? Where are you going? I'm still all wound up from the fighting. Gotta go work some of this energy out. If you feel like giving me a hand with that, I'll be down on the beach. Val winks at Kenna and pushes her way towards the door. Kenna wanders through the crowd, exchanging pleasantries here and there. I was wondering when your majesty would grace us with your presence. Raiden bows before Kenna, taking her hand and kissing it gently. You look beyond captivating. Thank you. Lady Kenna, tonight I request your charming company at my initiation. I'd be delighted. And what is this you're being initiated into? The Order of the Black Asps. My sister's organization of shadows. If I pass, others trial. A trial? You mean... Even after everything we've been through, she still doesn't trust you. You misunderstand. This is the way things are done in the Lycus Underworld. To forgive me without some kind of test would be seen as weakness. The fact that other is willing to let me try at all says a great deal. 
If you say so. Is there anything I can do to help? I was hoping you would ask. I'm allowed to bring a second someone I trust absolutely to assist me in the initiation. And I trust no one more than you. Are you sure this isn't just a ploy to get me alone? Well, that certainly came to mind. I'm not asking you merely as a friend. Not as a friend, but that's exactly what we are. Of course. That is to say, you're a true friend to me. Now I must go and prepare, but I'll be leaving in an hour. If you wish to accompany me, meet me by the staircase. Raiden bows deeply before slipping back into the crowd. Later, Leon finds Kenna standing alone at one of the tables. Usually I'm the one lurking in the corner of the celebration all by myself. I'm not lurking, just thinking. Ah, uh, about Rowan? How'd you guess? I'm certainly not Gabriel, but I've known you a long time. What happened with Rowan during the battle? I can see that it shook you. I was just thinking about everything that led to that point. Everything I did to bring it about. Kenna thinks back, remembering the choices she's made. Thorngate will never forget this. I'll never forget this. My kingdom is battered. It will take time to rebuild, but we'll become your fiercest allies. Thank you, Queen Kenna. You're welcome, Queen Rowan. Rowan, send as much as you can spare. Thank you, Kenna. I knew you understand. I'll go send word immediately. 100 weapons won't be enough to arm us all. It's more than you've had in the past. I say, let half of Thorngate's army stay behind. I believe that we will win this battle. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't prepare for other outcomes. If the worst happens, I'll rest easier knowing that Thorngate will be able to defend itself. As will I. Thank you, Queen Kenna. I will summon our 500 finest troops. Thank you, Rowan. A queen must make many hard decisions. If I could go back in time, I would do the exact same things. This war made me question myself constantly. But I think I made the right choices. Good. A queen should never question her decisions, only learn from them. How is Rowan? Last I saw, she could barely stand. She's recovering well, thanks to you. You pulled her back from the brink of death, my queen. I feel I must apologize about the things I've said about her. Rowan is a stubborn woman, but she risked her life to save yours. Go tell her that. Hearing you apologize will put a spring in her step, I'm sure. Leon shakes his head. Anyway. Luther, our guest of honour, is resting comfortably in the dungeons. We can start his fate after the celebration. Cocky bastard's not going anywhere. Kenna decides to meet Luther now. Ready to go talk with the Blood King? Lead the way. Kenna follows Leon away from the party. Near the door, Kenna runs into Val. If you're going where I think you're going, then I'm coming too. No objections here. The three of them continue towards the deep reaches of the dungeon. As they descend in silence, Kenna can't help but think of her lost friend. Wherever you are, Dom, I hope you're okay. Dominic slowly opens his eyes, pain throbbing through throughout his body. He finds himself lying on a table in a dark laboratory, a cold sensor pressed to his temple. No, what? Where am I? Easy there, fire freak. I don't imagine that hangover from dragon transformer gratification is pleasant. Hex. Dominic rises from the table and Dominic tries to conjure flame, but as soon as he envisions it, a pulse of electricity shoots through his head. <laughs> what you're experiencing is the ultimate preventative measure against your kind. Yes, your people seem to be all powerful capable of turning embers into infernos and raising lava from the ground. Dominic writhes on the table, pain slowly beginning to subside. So, instead of playing, I decided to move things to an arena where I'm dominant. The mind. Every time you think about anything, even relate it to fire, an electrical pulse scrambles your brain. Let's test it more thoroughly, shall we? Don't think about fire. Dominic closes his eyes and focuses all of his thoughts on elephants. Hmm. You have quite a knack for concentration, I'll give you that. I actually had a bit of trouble calibrating the device. 
At first I... As Hex rambles on about her invention, Dominic eyes the door of the lab. A moment later, he bursts off the table, rushing to escape. I really don't think that's wise! Dominic throws open the door and finds himself standing at the edge of a railing, thousands of feet above the ground. We're on an airship? A strong arm grabs Dominic, yanking him back in and sending him skidding along the floor. S -s -s Stay inside! Good, Anton. That'll be enough. Anton stands still, vacantly staring from the corner of the room. Hex turns to Dominic. See? It's pointless to run. You may as well resign yourself to your fate. Let me guess, you want to use me to destroy Kenna? Destroy Kenna? You're thinking too small. The only reason I participate in this pointless war is so that Luther would keep funding my research. Hex trails off, staring into nothingness. Her voice distant, hollow. I should have known. Luther would fail me too. He failed you? Weren't you working for him? The Nevrakis family and I had a symbiotic relationship for a time, but I would never subjugate myself to the likes of them. Those fools have no more right to rule than your precious Kenna, or any other so-called royalty. Tyrants and brutes. The lot of them. And who does have the right to rule? You? Why not me? Why shouldn't the world be in the hands of the best thinkers, rather than the best fighters? Thousands die every year because they don't have enough to eat, or because the village healer thinks stump water is medicine. Do you realize how ridiculous that is? That would never happen at the Foundry. We knew how to... to... Hex hands begin to tremble. They cast me out. Just because I wasn't content to sit safe inside our walls and let the rest of the world eat itself alive. They refused to help. So I made them help. The ones I saved built this airship. And they'll do more for me, soon. So that's your plan? Enslave everyone you meet until the whole world dances at the ends of your strings? You're just as blind as the rest of them. Why can't anyone see that this world is sick? The medicine won't be pleasant. But it's necessary. No one sees. Not even. Hex closes her eyes, taking several long, deep breaths before opening them again. Whitlock will understand. Someday. All of you will. You will see that I was only trying to build a better world. How are you going to accomplish all that by yourself? Hex looks at Dominic, then a slow smile creeps across her face. She takes a small device from her pocket and flips a switch. <coughs> Dominic falls to the floor, every muscle burning with white hot pain. Hex kneels beside Dominic's twitching body, running her long fingers through his hair. But I'm not alone, my force of fiery destruction. I have you, in a world gone mad with fever. You may just be the cure. Leon and Val at Kenna's side. They step down into the dungeons below Lycos, preparing to mete out final judgement to Luther Navrakis. Luther sits in his cell, glaring at Kenna as she approaches. Must be a special moment for you. I take no pleasure in seeing you, but I'm glad to see you're at your lowest. Hells, that's gotta hurt, huh, old man? Let's get this over with. No. What? You heard your queen! I have to know. Why did you kill the rules of the Five Kingdoms? Your foolish mother thought she could unite us, but I saw the rulers for what they really were. And what is that? Snakes. King Amoth, the Thords, Queen Kalale. They might have been all smiles on the surface, but they were scheming behind your mother's back for power while she strove for her impossible alliance. If I hadn't taken out those cold-blooded bastards, someone else would have. My mother was no snake. No, you're right. She was truly good. But there isn't much point in taking out three of the four rulers, is there? Might as well play for all the coins. You're nothing but a monster. Go ahead and believe that if it gives you solace. Now have you gotten what you came for? I have. Luther Nevrakis. I hereby sentence you to death. Leon opens up the cell, and he and Val drag Luther before Kenna. She unsheaths her sword. 
Not going to let me say something? No. When you've committed crimes against humanity, you don't deserve a voice. Luther shakes his head. You don't understand the danger you're in. Kenna holds her sword over his neck, wanting to end things once and for all, but Kenna senses truth in his words. End it, Kenna. After a deep breath, Kenna lowers her sword. What do you mean? With you defeated and the realm united under me, what danger is there? I wasn't returning to Lycos to fight you. I was retreating. If I'd had my entire fleet, you would have been wiped from existence entirely. You? He glares at Val and Leon. And your pitiful friends. What the hell did you just say? We crushed you. Believe what you want. You don't build an empire along a coastline without an unstoppable navy. Wait. Retreating. From... Our enemy to the west. The Iron Empire. Our enemy. Get this straight. There is no hour. There will be, or you'll die. The Iron Empire is a greater foe than anything you can imagine. Face it. You have two options. Execute me and be annihilated by the Iron Empire when they inevitably cross the Great Sea, or combine our weakened armies and fight against them together. <laughs>